The player's distance iron category is arguably the hottest it's ever been. It's going to get even more interesting with this new addition to the lineup from Ping. Take a listen to this. The new Ping i525 irons feature a new ballistic face that increases speed, distance and control. With a polym insert for better sound and feel, all packed into a compact player's design with perimeter weighting to help with forgiveness. It features a forged margin steel face, that hydropearl finish which has seen tremendous consistency in all conditions. Throw in a bit of tungsten weighting in the toe and shaft tip weights and this could possibly be the best player's distance iron to hit the market. So interesting stuff there from Ping and the use of the word ballistic. Well, that just, uh, let's see if this club is ballistic in my hands. We'll soon find out. We'll start trying the seven iron very, very shortly. I've got what is the standard spec and the loft is 30.5 degrees where you'd expect in this player's irons category. But Ping do that thing where they offer a retro loft, which is the weaker lofts, and they do a power spec as well. So even stronger lofted than what I've got in hand now. And I like that because it really pleases every golfer's needs and what they want. But what I'm really interested in, first of all, is aside from performance, which we'll look at very, very soon, and we may be getting some ballistic performance out of it, but let's start by how these things look because it's pretty damn impressive on the eye. So I said they were pretty impressive on the eye, and I think that's a bit of an understatement, but right now, to be honest with you, this iron category in general has got some fantastic looking clubs in it, so Ping had to do a good job in the release of these i525s, and they've done exactly that. It looks superb. And they've done, it's a follow on from the i500, which again, good looking iron, but I think this again has just got those few little tweaks in there that enhance this one a bit. It's got that Hydra Pearl finish, which was superb in terms of Ping's iron's performance in both wet and dry uh, conditions in terms of consistency. But it's stripped back, it's minimal in its markings, little bit of a um, few grooves cut out there, just a bit of detail, I suppose you'd call it, just make this a really, really good looking aisle iron and plenty of shelf appeal. Right, I've collected plenty of data and I'll talk about ballistic performance very, very soon in terms of ball speeds and yardage carries. But the one thing that has interested me massively in terms of its performance is the way these clubs launch the ball. I've tried nine, seven and five and the one thing they all do consistently is launch the ball very, very high indeed. We normally see that from clubs with a bit more mass and a the ability to shove that CG way back in the head. These aren't an overly big profile as you've already seen. So I'm not quite sure how they're achieving what they are, but in terms of ball flight, really still strong and carrying distance, but very high at the same time. Where that interests me in particular is down that longer end of the bag with the likes of the five iron and that stopping power and descent angle is really, really impressive. I'm gonna hit one more ball inside and yet again, you can see where my eyes are going, it's immediately up with this seven iron because that's the sort of ball flight it takes. Let's put these out on the course, see how they do in performance on reality. They can also test the sort of sound and feel out there. And then we'll come back in here and look at this ballistic performance from the i525s. So this is a great example of where these irons are doing exceptionally well in my book. 206 is par three plays. I'd normally play some, uh, a, a hybrid, three hybrid. The shot that you see me play now is with the five irons, the longest time we've got in the bag of these five two fives. And whilst I can see from here, we're only just about reached the front of the green, it certainly traveled 190. It's a really powerful five iron, but it also lofts the ball incredibly high as well. But one of the interesting things, nine irons in the bag, seven irons in the bag, we can, a lot of us can play any of those irons, but when you get to the longer end of the bag, the five irons can be a real telltale sign of just how forgiving an iron set is or not. And from what I'm seeing so far out here, the five iron is launching the ball incredibly high. It's got those ballistic ball speeds, I reckon. I briefly talked about the profile indoors, but very much at a dress. This is a really neat looking iron. That top line ever gets thinner. And for some people, 
this is the wrong club for them if you like if you're looking for confidence inspiring bulky irons these aren't them they're very much that players category but done in a more refined way so the top line becomes thinned down even at the five iron end of the bag there's not a huge amount of meat on that top line that you see but it's almost the shape it also sorry the shaping of these pin guys which is quite classical a really really good shape at address minimal offset what looks to be at least anyway it is a really good iron from the top line in this player's distance category no doubt about that come on wind bring it back bring it back we got enough oh we're just coming up just a tad short one th the last thing i want to talk about on the golf course is just about the sound and feel it's terrible when you test clubs indoors because there's a terrible echo in the room and it's not the great acoustics to say the least and whilst they always point out the same thing these are forged irons of a sort they're never going to feel like a pure forged iron but i will applaud ping on doing a great job of kind of softening that sound up a little whatever the magic is that they've put inside of there it's definitely muted that sound a bit it's better feeling but it's not pure forged iron feeling but i think we all know that by now right so performance done out on the course we'll look at uh, well i keep referencing ballistic performance because i love that word did that actually happen well in terms of seven iron we were probably about where we'd want to be in terms of carry distance it's a 165 carry launching very high like i said at 21.5 but very consistent in terms of that launch ball speed 111 and it was all off a club head speed average 77 mile an hour but again very very consistent so the performance in terms of carry in relationship to uh, club head speed and the ball speed were all exactly where i expect it for, to be from this category it did launch high maybe arguably just a little bit too high but we could certainly change those things in terms of custom fit and looking at shafts and whatnot then you go into the five iron jumps up to a 186 carry still 16.2 launch which is still fairly high there's a couple at 17 degrees in there so very high launch in five iron which again is what i was sort of trying to relay back to you early 120 ball speed and an average of just under 80 mile an hour club head speed real thing i like about this set of numbers is that gap that yardage gap between the seven and the five quite often what i struggle with in this category is i often struggle to see a distance difference in terms of going from a six iron to a five iron so i struggle with a gap and i often after in recent videos you've seen of mine i've often suggested you go from six iron through to four iron because we don't generate enough club head speed to justify the difference or generate the difference in terms of yardage carry when we get to the stronger end of the bag and that doesn't happen here so that's a real positive for me so you can clearly see we've got seven iron in at 165 we should have a six iron that comes in at 175 and then we've got the five iron in and around that 185 so a great spread in terms of yardage covered across the iron so that's may seem not a big deal to a lot of you but when i'm testing these things week in and week out i very rarely see that gap that allows me to put a full set of irons in the bag the overall summary is this you've already seen the slight negative is always the sound in these style of irons and it's again the thing that i would say that ping's major problem is they've definitely dampened the sound with what they've achieved inside of that body but it's still whatever happens these are still hollow body irons and to me whether you're looking at the kind of p790s whether we've got the callaway efforts again they always struggle just a little bit with having the sound and feel that you'd really want from a truly forged iron that's the only negative i can get but in terms of performance probably the best performing sets of irons in terms of numbers and performance out there on the course ease of use all those kind of things and packed into a very compact head style i just can't believe how much irons have progressed over the last two years and to get that type of performance out of that size of head top line the overall profile it's incredible what has happened and it just makes it a lot easier for most of us who like i said aspire for that smaller club head but often sometimes struggle with it we've now can put these kind of irons in the bag and uh, get a really good looking aisle small and compact but still plenty of forgiveness to help us out a little bit when we need it right that's me done on the i525s as ever i asked you earlier on in the video your opinion is really interesting to me have you been waiting for this one 
and now you've seen it, what are your thoughts? Comments down below. Right, I'm off and I'll see you all very, very soon.